everybody. Welcome to Trend Forecasting. Uh, this week, we're going to be focusing on Chapter 8, the lecture. As always, make sure that you read the textbook, read the chapter for all the detailed information on the concepts, um, and the lecture video will just be a general overview of what we are going to see in the chapter. <clears throat> I'll share my screen. All right. So again, we are in the Fashion Forecasting Textbook, the fifth edition. Um, we are still in part two, Forecasting Influences, specifically chapter eight, which is all about fine art and popular culture. Some objectives that we have for this chapter. The first is to identify the different types of artistic and popular cultural influences on fashion and how important they are. Second is to demonstrate how media impacts the flow of fashion trend dissemination. And third is to describe how forecasters utilize media and fashion forecasting practices. Okay, culture influencing culture. Let's talk about this. So fashion is increasingly increasingly viewed as a significant cultural medium. Uh, for a long time, it was kind of cast aside and not considered as important as a lot of the other fine arts. Um, the relationship between the different creative areas is much more fluid than in other industries. So when we think about fashion and all the creative areas that are side by side, we understand that there is a fluid flow between them, right? Art impacts fashion, fashion impacts TV, um, and you know, TV impacts co popular culture. So it's a very fluid movement throughout the industries. Fashion designers have much in common with artists in other creative industries. So it's kind of interesting how fashion designers are similar to artists, are similar to musicians, are similar to um, TV producers and directors. They all have that common thread of being creative individuals. Why culture matters. So artists consistently influence other artists and fashion inspiration can come from cross sensory in interpretation. Um, because fashion is uses a lot of our different senses, feel or see, we see it, we can feel it, um, it evokes emotion. Um, this art ultimately influences other artists in the way that they do their things. Um, creativity is influenced by everything a designer is exposed to. Very important to have multiple sources of influence and inspiration when you are creative in the fashion industry field. Um, when you're exposed to different creative outlets, you tend to create things that are a little bit more complex, a little bit more advanced. Um, and it's important that designers, people just in within this industry attend cultural events um, in order to really renew their creative inspiration from different related areas, right? If we become so siloed in our inspiration, um, our designs or our perspective on fashion tends to become flat. So when we use different sources of inspiration culturally, artistically, what politically, what's going on in the world, we can really um, renew what our interpretation of being creative means and often uh, produce work that is a little bit more elevated. Forecasters have to know what is going on in all areas of culture because preferences in one area of art can be paralleled in another. So to be a successful um, forecaster along with a designer or stylist or buyer, it's really important to understand what is happening in culture. How are people feeling? Why are they buying the things that they're buying? Why are they interested in this trend over that trend? A lot of that comes from our culture, from our daily life, from things that are happening in the world. And if we're not uh, well-versed or knowledgeable on that, or at least just in the know of what's going on, we will be, be behind the times. Good taste, coolness, subjectivity, challenges for fashion. So um, people consume culture simply because they like it, right? What's the fun, what's so fun to learn about is what people are doing, what people are interested in, what people are passionate about. That is culture, right? We simply like it, we're interested in it, and we consume it very regularly. Forecasters are not critics, okay? We're not critics. We're just spotting the trends and we are translating them. So regardless if you like the trend or you're going to wear the trend or you think it's important for yourself, right, or your group of friends, that really doesn't matter when you're a forecaster. We are essentially spotting trends that we see out in the wild. 
or translating them and understanding what that means to whatever specific medium you're working with. If you're working with a department store, or you're working with a newspaper or magazine, we're translating those trends that we have spotted and making them make sense for that medium. And we're also not passing judgment on the trends that we're spotting, okay? Uh, a very important person in our culture is Bill Cunningham. Uh, if you ever get the chance to watch his documentary, I highly recommend it. Um, he was a famous street style photographer. Um, and one of his famous quotes is, I don't decide anything. I let the street speak to me. It isn't really what I think, it's what I see. And that's typically what we as forecasters kind of try to embody is that it's not what I think about the trend or it's not how I think that people should be wearing a certain thing or how they should be wearing it. It's what I see in the street replicates the trends that I'm spotting and then I'm translating them. Sources of culture, okay? So sources of culture, um, let's see, I want to show you guys. Where is this? Okay, so we have three different sources of culture. According to futurist and author Faith Popcorn, uh, cultural trends arise from three sources. So high culture is fine and performative arts. Okay, so anything that you see in a museum or a theatrical show um, is considered high culture. Low culture are activities pursued locally by special interest groups outside of mainstream awareness. So that would be things that are specific if you go to a rave or if you go to a goth punk show, those are considered low culture and popular culture are things that we see every day that we can't really get out of our sight, right? Advertising, movies, television, music, magazine, celebrity news. These are things that are kind of put in our faces. We can't get away from it because we see it on TV. We hear it on the radio. We see it on a billboard. Um, that is considered popular culture. So typically pop culture acts as an innovator and as a distant opinion leader. Right. Okay, fine art. Let's talk about some fine art. So dance is considered a fine art. The relationship between dance and fashion has a long history that includes some well-known designers. First, Coco Chanel. Uh, design costumes for choreographer uh, for a certain ballet for Serge Delvis. Um, some of those famous dancers have become well-known style icons. So dance and fashion have the a relationship in the fact that dancers need costumes. Typically they need to be, you know, designed and curated specifically for their uh, trade. Um, and for some reason, dancers tip uh you know essentially have an impact in the way that we see fashion because they move with clothes on and that is always beautiful to see so a lot of dancers have become style icons within the fashion world the late choreographer pina bush had a fashion following of people who loved the fluid dresses that moved freely with their dancers so there's something about movement and clothing that is really appealing to the viewer. Um, and I will talk from my certain experience of being a fashion stylist. There's nothing better than when your model moves in the clothes that you put them in, right? A lot of times, I've worked with a lot of times dancers that wear the model or wear the clothing for certain commercials or photo shoots that I do. And those shoots are always so beautiful because dancers understand their body and they understand how to move in clothing. And ultimately that makes an impact on how you perceive either the trend or the look or whatever you're putting them in. So for some reason, there is a beautiful connection between movement, which the dancer brings and the clothing, the, lo the looks, the designs that are put on the dancers. Well, sculpture is also considered another fine art. Sculpture has a has long influenced fashion, classical Greek sculpture, which inspired women to copy the wet drapery look. Okay, meet Madame Grise achieved this look with draping techniques for her Grecian goddess gown. So there are designers that have taken inspiration from sculpture and translated that to modern wear. Um, modern sculpture also influences contemporary fashion like designer Jonathan Anderson when he partnered with American sculptor Richard X. Zatzowitz on a handbag inspired by Zatzowitz Tangless Tangles sculptures. Paintings also translate most easily to fashion. Designers regular take, regularly take images and put them on their, their designs as motif, right? 
Um, there has been plenty of times where I'm working with the department store and they have either, you know, been inspired by a motif from a painting uh, or by a color palette or by a design from a painting and take that and put that on clothing. So painting art has a very close translation and communication um, with, with fashion in their designs. Collaboration between fashion designers and painters have been commonplace since Elsa Schiaparelli collaborated with surrealist Salvador Dali on her infamous lobster gown. Still to this day, if you look at Schiaparelli designs, which hopefully you guys all saw um, Schiaparelli in um, fall 2022 runway shows, they're all considered pieces of fine art, right? Every single piece of hers has some sort of element that links us back to painting or sculpture or um, a famous surrealist painter or something like that. So she takes a lot of inspiration from painting specifically. Um, and you can see that in her clothing. Today, prominent collaborations between painters and fashion designers include the longstanding collaboration between American artists Sterling Ruby and Rafson. So there has always been a partnership between painters and fashion designers. I think that's not going away anytime soon. It's a source of inspiration. It's a source of new color theory. It's a source of a movement um, that fashion designers don't take lightly. Print media, a study found that fashion magazines have four times the social impact of fashion bloggers. Now, I think this was in 2019, so I would like to see the information now, especially with what we went through these last two years and how we were, you know, stuck to our phones and watching fashion bloggers do things. Um, but traditionally, uh, fashion magazines have had a huge social impact on what people buy, what people perceive to be high fashion, how people want to dress, um, aspirational looks are people that they look up to. So print media is very important in fashion. Magazines today don't influence trends as much as present them to their readers. So we present ideas to the readers through magazines, but we probably don't influence it as much as our influencers or our fashion bloggers. So that is kind of shifted on the fact that we're presenting these beautiful ideas or how to put together looks or what's the hottest coat for fall, um, but we don't influence them. We don't influence the trends, like the beginning of the trends as much as important people in a popular culture. Print magazines have strengthened their position in consumers' minds as fashion tastemakers by becoming fashion brands themselves. So when we talk about you know, a fashion magazine called Vogue, we all understand the importance of Vogue. We understand where it stands on the hierarchy of fashion. And if Vogue typically says something is good or something is cool, or that's the way we're moving, direction we're moving in, for the most part, the consumer mind agrees with it because it has created such a big place in, in our market, in our industry. Magazines have direct contact with their audience and share their fashion advice in real time, making sure that they're always on, type, on top of a breaking trend. And this has become easier with Instagram and the internet, obviously, because you, know, you don't have to wait for every month to receive uh, your magazine, right? You can go on the Vogue app and see constant updates of what's happening, what trends are breaking. Um, you can also see it on their Instagram. So because magazine has... Um, spread out to different mediums, we're getting information faster and quicker than traditional. Another part of pop culture is movies, okay? Movies, co movie costumes both reflect and set trends. However, that influence, the influence that movies have on fashion appears to be dwindling. And this is a big part of what has happened over the last two years. How many of you guys have been to a movie theater to watch a movie? I, I love watching movies in theaters and I haven't even gone because I feel like there isn't a movie to watch and of the situation we've been in, right? So um, movies in the past have had a huge, heavy, heavy impact on trends, on how people feel about trends, why people are inspired by these trends, um, but that appears to be dwindling in the last couple of years. An example of Star Wars franchise, they've always, they have increased their association with the fashion industry by, um, you know, delegating different partnerships, right? You can get Star Wars shoes, you can get Star Wars pajamas, 
I mean, you can dress Star Wars if that is something that you're into. Television, okay, another part of popular culture, is still a more effective medium than the internet and mobile devices for impacting consumer behavior through creating an emotional connection and introducing novelty. So the really important thing to understand between television and like Instagram or your mobile device is that through television, we often get a story and we often become attached to the story because there's an emotional connection there. And when there's an emotional connection to uh, a story, we often take that trend or those ideas a little bit more um, seriously than if we're just scrolling and seeing ideas presented to us. Okay. The impact of television on influencing trend has result resulted in a relatively new type behind the scenes trendsetter, costume designer. Okay, that is a type of stylist. Um, costume designer is very, very important in this field. They are the ones that are telling the story of the character through dress. So what a character wears in a television show tells you so much about the personality, where they're going, what their motives are, um, why they act the way that they do, right? The number one show that comes to mind right now is Euphoria, okay? Every single character in that TV show has a very specific identity. And I believe that Heidi Bevins, a costume designer, does a spectacular job at really identifying those personalities and bringing them to life through the dress. So customer design, costume designers who work on shows um, set in the past, typically, you know, is a little bit harder than working with shows that are in the present. They have additional challenges of staying true to an era. Okay, so if we think about Bridgerton or the Gilded Age, that costume designer is probably gonna have a little bit tougher time because they have to stay true to what that era was by dressing the, the characters in appropriate costumes, but also have to appeal to contemporary viewers, which is a lot harder than like a euphoria where your viewers are connecting with the characters right away because they're people that they would see or know in their everyday life. Um, okay, so music. Gerber used its spring 2015 menswear show to also introduce the public to British singer Josh Record. Burberry is no longer a trendsetter in fashion, it is now a trendsetter in music as well. So music and fashion go hand in hand. We use music to present trends. We use music to evoke emotion when we are telling a story about trends. Um, very, very important to understand the impact that music has on fashion. When Virgil Abloh, RIP, assumed his role as creative director at Louis Vuitton, one of his first action was to appoint British DJ Benji B as music director as, at Louis Vuitton. So you can see how important music is to design, is to a brand identity, is to helping people translate what is happening on a runway. Um, music is a very important key factor. All right, that is chapter what is it, chapter eight, um, please make sure to read the chapter along with going over the lecture notes and complete your homework. Thank you.